In this video, we're going to go over how to add a date range slider to your D3 visualizations. To build the chart that we'll be working with, you can check out parts 1 and 2 of this series in the description below. You can also get the data we'll be using down there as well. And all the code that we'll be using in this tutorial is also available in the links below. To begin, we're going to update our index.html that we developed in the first two videos with an additional div element. Right beneath our chart container, we'll add in a new div called slider range. This is the div that's going to contain our slider once we add it in. Then below our D3 script, we're going to call in another script. Feel free to reference the code down below to get this exact link, but this is the script that's going to help us create our slider. Then we will move into our script. Now we're going to move down past where we created our listing rectangle in the previous videos. We're looking for this one, the mouse leave, because we're going to add our new code in right below this mouse leave function and right above our chart title function. The first thing to do for our slider is to define it. So we're going to create a const called slider range. We're going to give it D3 slider bottom. We're going to set the minimum value to the minimum date in our data set and the maximum value to the maximum date in our data set. We'll give it a width. We'll format the ticks. We're going to say, just give us three ticks, but you can set this to whatever you'd like. And we're going to give it a default value. So the default value will be the minimum and the maximum again. So it's going to default to the full range of our data set. And we'll give it a fill, which is the money color that we've been using throughout our visualization. We now need to tell the page what to do whenever the slider changes. So we're going to call our slider range that we've just defined. And we're going to give it an on change function. Call this val. So basically saying whenever the values change, do something. And so the first thing we're going to do is set a new X domain and we'll take the values. This value is going to be an array. Effectively, when we change our slider, it's going to update the minimum and maximums that we set as a default up here. So this value will be a new minimum and a new maximum. So we'll set our X domain to this new minimum and new maximum. Then we're going to declare a new constant called filter data. We'll use the filter call to filter our data by D date that is greater than or equal to the first value in our new values array and less than or equal to the second value. So the minimum and the maximum. We're filtering the data to only give us the dates that fall within that range. Using that filtered data, we will then set our Y domain from zero to the new max based on our filtered data. After that, we also need to update our lines. So we'll use svg.select to select all of our lines and update those lines based on the filtered data now. And the same thing for our areas. This is taking our new data set and just redrawing the lines and areas that we created in the first two videos. But we also need to update our axes. So we'll throw those in here as well. We'll select the axes, give it a little transition so it's nice and smooth, and we're going to recall our axis bottom which now has an updated domain based on our values. We will do the same thing with our Y axis. We'll recall the Y axis and recall the axis right with our new updated values. That's all the changes we want to make for this visualization. And so we'll close it off. When we hit save, nothing's there yet. It's because we haven't actually added the slider to the screen. We've just put the functionality in there for what happens when you move it. So let's add it in. We'll declare constant. I've called it G range. We'll use D3 select to select our slider range div that we've added to our HTML. We're going to append an SVG to it. We'll give it a width and a height and a group. And we'll transform and translate that group, which is going to decide where it will show up on the screen. Then the final step, we use G range dot call and call in our slider range. When we hit save, our slider appears in the lower left hand corner and we can drag it and you'll see that everything updates nice and smoothly. The new ranges appear on the axes and the lines and areas redraw themselves pretty seamlessly. And that's all there is to it. In this video series, we've learned how to make an area chart, customize the axes, create these crosshair tooltip and add a date range slider to the screen. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.